SSD size versus speed encore. This is the addendum to the first video that I have released on this topic with some additional testing results. Let's have a look. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Being that this is an encore, I have added an additional testing result for multitasking and I'll leave timestamp to them in the description below. But before you do that, I highly encourage you to listen to this disclaimer because it will provide you more context to what I do. And the context is absolutely important because otherwise we would end up just picking one thing that I do and saying it may not be right or it may not be the way how you agree with it. But let me give you some thought process and background to all this. First of all, I'm approaching this from a pro photographer standpoint. I personally am a pro photographer, so I'm dealing with hundreds if not thousands of files at the end of every session. These machines are not necessarily necessarily one that I would use in my pro workflow and yes I have more pro max that I use however many of you out there who are aspiring photographers who are hobbyists who are just starting photography well these machines are really great machines at an amazing price point so if you're just doing this and you're trying to get an all-purpose machine and you want to know how they perform in photography under heavy workload, well, this is the reason why I am doing all these tests with 1000 Nikon DA50 files that are 45 megapixel. Mind you, these are 1000 files. So it is in, in general, a fairly heavy workload that I'm pushing onto these machines. Secondly, I want to say that I appreciate all the comments, positive or negative that you have left out there. I also appreciate any kind comments that you guys have left for me as well. So I will mention that. So thank you so much for those. But either way, I appreciate all the comments. But with this being said, there are comments about, for instance, how other videos and other channels are testing this and are getting different results than I am getting. The one thing that I don't do is I don't generally watch other videos before I run these tests because I want my results and my analysis to just be based on the data that I get without any other opinion biasing the way how I would think about these ships. So that's the first thing that I do. Now, the second thing that I want to point out is that as you guys are sharing with me the configurations that are used in many other videos, they are a little bit different than the configuration for the machine that I have. For instance, if you have gone in and upgrade the machine or if these testers have gone and upgrade the machine and they add multiple variable into the upgrade, for example, both SSD and RAM, and they're trying to compare the SSD speed or just the speed of the machine in general, that RAM is going to highly bias the way how the machine is going to perform in duration in any test at all. So what I generally try to do is limit the variable to just one and set the baseline up. This way, we get a chance to really see how each of the component is performing when these programs that I am testing are using each of these system resources. Now with this in mind, Apple is really smart in the way how they segment their ship. These M1 and M2 ship are more consumer leaning ship, whereas there are more of the pro oriented ship, the M1 Pro, M1 Max, and M1 Ultra. And these really targeted different workloads. For example, the pro ship can handle multitasking much better, can export much faster because there are more cores on the system. Now, I'm not saying that these M1 and M2 can't perform any pro tasks. Yes, it can, and many of you guys are proving that already, but Remember this at the very same time that these consumer leaning ship are more of a compact or small size family sedan. Can you use it to haul cargo? Yes, to an extent. Can you use it to haul a heavy container? Well, maybe to a certain point, but if you constantly do that, you're going to break the car, right? And that's why they have other cars that are out there like pickup trucks or like trucks, for instance, that you can choose to run these tasks. And this is the exact same thing that Apple is doing right now because they know that most of the people, the target demographic for these machines don't really need that much power. But if you are a pro, you may want to consider upgrading. And that's always the thing that I'm actually leaning towards that if you are a pro, then these machines may not necessarily be the one for you. And every one workflow is different. So I am definitely going to respect that. But for me, I am definitely going to choose a more pro machine. So based on the comments I have received, all the tests were done with just one program and everyone seems to be somewhat offended by that. My apologies. Um, I have done some tests with multitasking and the result is kind of a mix. I mean, in certain tasks, you're gonna see that it is showing an improvement in certain tasks, maybe not so much, but we'll take a look at the result in just a second. Now, the other thing I also want to mention too is that in my comments, I have mentioned that if you are using these machines to constantly work with Panorama Merge, working with exporting or encoding file in ProRes 422 or doing any of the tasks, for example, working with huge files in Photoshop, that you may want to consider upgrading the component inside the machine anyway, whether that is a larger SSD or more memory in the system, those are worthwhile investment. And 
I don't mean anything other than that. I'm not trying to say that these machines are slow and you should go in and upgrade them. I'm all about the use case. So if you're gonna use a machine in that capacity, that has always been my argument that if you're gonna push these machine hard, then maybe the base model is not for you. And I still stand firm on that. I don't mean anything by that. I'm not saying that everyone should upgrade their machines, not at all. But if you're pushing it that hard, there are performance gains that you can have from upgrading certain components on these computers. So SSD speed versus size, which is the one thing that got me into this in the first place, because in my testing, well, depending on what I'm doing, the result can vary and it also yeah, maybe not very so much at the same time. It seems that opinion on this is pretty much already set. But anyway, I want to point out that in the base machine for these M2, Apple is just using one NAND chip, which is why the speed has dropped down to around 1.4 gigabytes per second. Whereas if you bump this up to a 512, the speed is pretty much over two gigabytes per second. And this is very similar in the base M1 MacBook Air where Apple is using two NAND chip instead of one. So this is where this whole conversation all started. This is the SSD speed. So you can take a look at this for comparison. And here's a look at our test system. So one of the things that I want to point out in my test system when I am comparing Comparing the SSD speed in this system and this is absolutely important is that I have capped my memory at 8 gigabytes so for both of these systems the memory is kept the same because I can tell you right now and I will also show you the result too is that the moment I throw in the result from a 16 gigabyte memory machine in it drastically changed the way how the system is performing and that is also really changing it too considering that the 16 gigabyte is running with the slower SSD on the system comparing to this. So you're going to see the result in multiple different angles and definitely pause the slides you can analyze them yourself too. One thing I would say is that I can't test the machine in all the variants, the variations are out there. There's just so many of them and it is a costly endeavor to run all these tests. So the machines that I have configured are capped in a way that should show the performance for those single components, the things that I'm talking about. So that being said, I also want to mention that a lot of what we're seeing right now with M2 has to do with the lack of optimization. It's not really utilizing the chip very well at all. And that's a lot of what we see in performance degradation regard, you know, relative to, for instance, the M1. So now let's talk about testing method. I will also share with you the result with just one app running at any given time and also provide you some context as to why that is important as well. However, for this, I come up with two multitasking workflow. One of them is moderate, the other one's heavy. The difference between the two is the numbers of video actively playing on the system. For both of these tests, there are two browsers, Chrome and Safari, and each of these browsers would have four static websites. For the moderate one, it has one video playing and it's playing the whole time for both of these browsers in the foreground. In addition, I also have the system monitoring program running on these computers too. Both of these browsers generally consume around three to five gigabytes of memory. And then on the heavy workload one, I bumped up from just, for instance, one video, I have three videos running on three separate tabs in both of these browsers. So we have six videos running total, and that is really pushing the machine to the brink under the heavy workload. The CPU usage definitely increased when we run it under the heavy workload. And as I'm doing these tests, some of them the task won't finish under the moderate. Some of them I have run the task in both the moderate and heavy workload, but I'm going to share that with you when I'm running these tests. The main question that we have to ask running these multitasking thing is what are we looking for? Are we looking for a good browser performance so that the YouTube video playback will be smooth when we're trying to export our content from Final Cut Pro or from Lightroom Classic, whatever that may be? Or are we looking for a higher performance these machines? It really comes down to the context, what we're really trying to gather from this. And one of the things that I also want to share as well is that we live in the age of smartphones now where we all have these. So, I mean, if you're having your computer running an export task, I, chances are I will probably pick up my phone or my tablet. And if you have a tablet, but I would definitely pick up my phone and go watch a video somewhere else and just leave the computer running rather than trying to open a website up and run another task. So that's another thing to really think about, like how much are you really doing at the same time? I mean, I could understand, for instance, if you're running these export tasks and you're also trying to write paper and email at the same time and do all those things and working in a computer is better. So think about that in this specific context too, that we all have these portable devices now that can function as an addition to what we have as the computer working. Now, the other thing I also want to mention about this is that at some point, we have to just let logic dictate that if your export is taking significantly longer because there are multiple apps running on the computer and 
you have only a finite amount of memory in the machine, it may not be a bad idea to quit all those applications, restart the system so you start fresh and you just run that app in a singular application so you can finish that task faster and then you can go on to do whatever else you have to do. There is a value in thinking that way at the very same time. I'm gonna point out where that may come in. Now, I'm doing these tests again because I am just genuinely curious based on the comments. I'm not trying to prove anyone wrong. That has not been the goal for my channel. I am not trying to go against anybody for that matter. What I'm really trying to do is to show the result based on the testing that I've done. So let's start with Lightroom Classic. And as always, with 11.4 and newer, Adobe has enabled GPU acceleration on export. I'll leave a guide to it up here and in the description below so you can enable that yourself because it is not automatically enabled on eight gigabyte machine, both M1, M2 and on many Intel machines. So I would definitely check that out. All right, with this being said, I want to just reiterate this again, that the machine that I'm testing for these SSD speed have the same variable eight gigabytes of memory, because as I'm about to show you, and I've already made a video about this, when we start to throw in the 16 gigabyte RAM into the equation, the result start to change drastically. So that's something to keep in mind. I'll leave a link to this video in the description below and up here too, so you can take a look at that. The system that I don't have is a 16 gigabyte with 512 gigabyte SSD. And what I can tell you is that if I have this system, chances are it will probably come up to the very top of the list because it has two things working for it. More memory internal to the machine. So the program can access that readily much easier than for example, the eight gigabyte one. And it also has a faster swap on the SSD. So it has a faster SSD speed. But if we're taking a look at just in context what we have right now, based on what I got, this is what we're gonna look at. And as a reminder, this is the testing method that I am using to run these tests. There is a moderate and there's a heavy workflow. Now let's have a look at the result from Lightroom Classic one-to-one -one preview. For this, I am using the machine that has the same amount of memory inside them. The only variation is SSD. And yes, under moderate workflow, we start to see some time variation because yes, the 512 gigabyte SSD swap is definitely faster. And the same thing can be said under the heavy workload too. Something to think about is that under the heavy workload, the timing is crossing a threshold of one hour already. And if you have to wait that long of a time to work on your raw files, then this is one of the logic that I shared with you earlier about quitting all the apps and just restarting the system so that it can run the program in a solo mode that won't show that much of a performance variation. And that's also something to think about that I said before too, is that we always have our phones. So if you're just browsing a video, there's really no need for you to do that on the computer, unless there is something that you definitely need to use the computer to finish that task on while you're performing these export tasks. And if I throw in the 16 gigabyte machine into the configuration, I mean, you start to see the time drastically change there that the 16 gigabyte, even this is the one with a slower SSD in the system, is performing much better than the faster SSD on the system itself, considering, you know, swap may be happening. I also received a comment that on a 256 machine, if you're running it to the brink where it's getting full all the time, the machine won't run quite as fast or even slower because SSD runs slower when they're full. I mean, that's pretty much the nature for all storage devices. So if you need more storage, this is also another reason why you may want to consider upgrading because again, remember these computers are technically family or compact sedan, and you're trying to haul a large container with it, it may not work very well for long term. And if we take a look at this result, I want to show you the performance in solo application, which shows very little difference in SSD speed, maybe about like a minute or so. I mean, it doesn't you know show that much variation. The 16 gigabyte is definitely doing a much better job and it is definitely that much faster. You can see right now that it's exporting at around 20 minutes and the timing for the 16 gigabyte one, even under heavy workflow, it's still only seven minutes longer. Whereas if you are taking a look at these machines right now and just capping the memory at eight gigabyte, I mean, under heavy workload, we're talking about over an hour and under moderate one, where it's talking about spending double the amount of time. So I understand the fact that we want to multitask and yes, you can definitely multitask, but it is something to think about that if you're going to put your machine into a heavy workload, a pro workflow, like what I am demonstrating right now, it may not be a bad idea, again, to quit the app and just run this in solo application because you are saving yourself a lot of time in the workflow. 
All right, let's take a look at export for 1000 files. For the moderate workflow, this is using GPU for export in Lightroom. We're not seeing that much variation at all. However, when I'm running this in Lightroom under heavy workload, this is six video playing. I mean, it's an insane amount of th things that are going on in the system. And yes, those videos are definitely lagging, whereas the one video playing in each of the browsers tend to do a little bit better. But I mean, let me put it this way. If you want your machine to run the fastest and get the fastest experience, well, Grab this portable device that you have and go watch a video on it. Leave your machine just running. Grab lunch. You know, go out and do something. Take a walk or something like that and take a break from these tasks. But if you take a look right now under heavy workload and I spend five hours waiting for this task to finish because with Lightroom Classic on a machine with eight gigabytes of memory, even though you have gone in and enabled GPU acceleration, because there is limited amount of memory and because there's a lot of swap on the system, the system the program just refuses to use the GPU on the system or it doesn't even use it that much at all. And that's why we're seeing the time being exorbitantly crazy like that. So for this, I had to modify the testing and just do this test under a moderate workflow. Now, when I add in the 16 gigabyte machine, that can just literally perform the task just fine because now the program have more memory to really go in and that is using GPU acceleration for exporting. One more shot I want to share with you about this is the fact that even on, for instance, the M2 machine with 16 gigabyte, when we're putting it under the moderate workload, we're still seeing the time almost double for exporting that, like I said before, maybe it is not a bad idea to sacrifice some of the tasks that you're doing in order for you to save that half amount of time and you can use the computer in the time that you save running in a single application to really optimize what else that you're doing on the system. And you can multitask then, provided you're not running these heavy tasks all the time. These are just things to think about. And there are other alternative ways to use these machines. I want to be absolutely clear about that. Now let's have a look at Lightroom Classic Panorama Merge. This is 314 megapixels. It is an extremely huge file. And at the very most, I mean, this swap takes up to close to 10 gigabytes on the system. So yes, a faster swap on an SSD is going to show you a much better result. And yes, the time is in half. So it is significant. But what happens though, when I throw in the result from a 16 gigabyte machine in? We can see right now that the 16 gigabyte machine is really cutting that time in half. And what this is also telling us is that if I have a machine with 16 gigabytes of memory and 5 12 gigabyte SSD with two variable changes, it will probably sit at the very top of this chart and perform even better than the 16 256 that I have right now. But by doing that test, I'm not really controlling the variables anymore. I'm just really looking at how much better these two components, more memory and a faster SSD in the system is going to perform. What I'm really doing right now is two comparisons, talking about SSD speed in comparison when it comes to swap multitasking. And secondly, I'm also talking about how much memory or how much the memory will benefit from multitasking as well. And as you can see clearly, 16 gigabyte is holding its own just fine with the time increase only just a little bit when we go from moderate to the heavy workflow from one video playing in each browser to three videos playing in each of the browser that is six video totals. You can see that it's holding its own just fine. However, on these other machines, the time literally almost doubled. So that's some perspective to think about. Now let's have a look at Capture One. Interestingly enough with Capture One, I ran everything under heavy workload, unlike Lightroom where I have to go into moderate for one of the tests, especially in the exporting because the video card's not getting utilized and that's the way how Lightroom is programmed. But when it comes to Capture One 22, for example, import under heavy workload, we're seeing 44 seconds variation. So obviously Capture One doesn't go in and utilize the memory or the swap quite as much. Yes, it is still swapping the system, but a small amount of that is happening in the background. And yeah, this is under, again, heavy workload, two browsers, seven tabs running on each of the browsers. Three of them are video playing and six videos total. When we add in the 16 gigabyte machine into the mix, we can see that giving the machine more memory is definitely showing much more benefit than having the conversation about the SSD speed comparison in general. And when we talk about the export in comparison, if I just show you a solo program, this is just running in a single application versus running in a heavy workflow. With Capture One, you're not seeing that much of a difference. Yes, there are some variation. And yes, this does show that the 512 is slightly better, but it's not quite as significant as if you would have gone in and upgraded to 16 gigabytes of memory. 
Again, if you have the 16 and 512, this result will probably be sitting in a top, but I don't have that machine to test. And this is really showing the results is fine, comparing the relations for each of these machines together. Exporting result under heavy workflow, we do see some slight variation. This is using GPU heavily, and we can see that it is around close to two and a half minute faster than the 256 gigabyte. However, when we bump up the memory, you see that time does definitely decrease and is showing you where you may want to put in the investment into the machine. Now, as far as arguing whether SSD size makes a difference or not and SSD speed, well, to an extent, but I can show you that if, again, you apply the same logic that I shared, quit the program, run these in solo mode, just a single application, which may not necessarily represent real world, but I do that all the time. I know that my pro photographer friends, sometimes they do that when they have multiple apps running and their computers aren't running well, they just restart and just run that app. Once they're done, they have multitask running again, and they're saving a lot of time that way. And that's just something to consider too. But again, the 16 gigabytes is holding just fine comparing solo to heavy. I mean, we're talking about a minute difference, but when we talk about these other machines, you are really increasing a lot of time trying to run this type of workload. And that's just something to really consider when you're using these time to do all these tasks. Final Cut Pro, H.264, 256 and 512. Amazingly enough, the time, I would say like it's about a minute part, 256 is a little bit faster for some reason in this test. I did ran this test multiple times under the heavy workload. This is the result that we got. However, when I throw in the 16 gigabyte machine, you can see that the 16 gigabyte is pretty much sitting there at the very top. The timing for the 16 gigabyte, mind you, is very similar to when I'm running this application alone without any other apps running. You can see that the timing is about the same there. So the machine does definitely have the capability. The 16 gigabyte is holding its own just fine with all these browsers, all these videos running. However, when it comes to the eight gigabyte machine, not so much. Again, trying to use a family sedan to haul a cargo container, not necessarily the most appropriate. Same thing can be said about the HEVC 8-bit. You can see the result timing right there, really close to each other. However, throwing the 16 gigabyte machine, timing is cut down by almost half. And comparing this with the result, the 16 gigabyte machine show no variation in timing whatsoever under heavy workload. Yes, the videos are starting to stutter a little bit. They're not running quite as smooth on all the uh, six videos that are playing. This is something to be expected when you're pushing the machine as hard. But this is just even going to use a media engine in the machine and you see this variation already. Timing does increase with the heavy workflow you can see there and with ProRes 422. This is something that I said about ProRes 422 and some have said that, well, in this example, the timing is longer. Yes, I did say that. And yes, you will see the faster write, read, write to SSD and swap coming into benefit here. But if you're doing ProRes 512 or 256, it's not going to really do you a lot of good in the long run because this 10 minute 4K video export to ProRes is already around 35 gigabytes. So that is a large file that you're exporting to a system, a very large file for that matter. Throwing in a 16 gigabyte machine, I mean, you can see the timing gets cut down. I don't even know, it's like by a factor of close to five, four or five right there. And then when we compare the timing on a 16 machine running in just solo application versus running in a heavy workflow, timing does not change that much at all, however, when we're running these in solo, you can see that there are some variations. Yes, the faster SSD does benefit. And yes, you still see that benefit. But when you're running the 8 gigabyte machine under a heavy workflow, this is one of those things where I would tell you, just stop multitasking for a little bit. Have these heavy intensive tasks, finish the workflow first, then continue what you're doing because you're going to save that much more time and you're gonna be able to use your computer to do the other tasks that you wanna do in a much more smoother, enjoyable fashion. And your experience as a user is definitely gonna be that much better. So to talk about this, does the base SSD speed matter? I mean, if you're running all these heavy multitasking workloads as I'm showing you right now, then yeah, sure, yes, it does matter. But the variation that you're seeing right now, I wouldn't say that one is definitely faster like by half or anything. None of the graph that I've shown you is 50% faster on the 512 versus the 256. In fact, they trail pretty much the same way that you can see right now, upgrading 16 gigabytes of memory will give you the better bang for the buck. And as I mentioned already this multiple times this video, logical decision, quit all the programs, restart the computer, start and run one single app is going to save you a lot of time and make you your using experience that much better. So 
That's my thought about these SSD speed thing. In a normal course of one usage, um, you wouldn't necessarily push the machine through these heavy pro workflow, merging, for example, a 314 gigabyte file, compressing out, for instance, ProRes 422 for mastering file type, or, you know, for that matter, we, you know, working with 1000 raw files in Lightroom. But if you do, these are some of the other alternative configurations, instead of just looking at it solely from the SSD speed standpoint. Anyway, I hope that I'm able to clarify certain things up, make my point about things. If you have listened to the end, I greatly appreciate this. And I will also say this too, for those who listen to the end, if you want to leave a comment, I mean, I appreciate, you know, any kind comments. If you don't agree with me, uh, I appreciate any kind of dissent in opinion, but I ask that you be kind about it at the same time because at the other end of the camera, I'm still an actual human being. And some of the comments I receive, I understand that you may find it frustrating, but they're not written in the nicest way possible. And they do have an effect on other individuals, including myself. So I just want to share that with you. But anyway, thank you. I appreciate all the comments still. Um, and if you have any questions or comment in addition to what we have covered here, leave them below. Give us a like, subscribe, and hit the bell you're new, and in art we trust.